Hello, we're back here. Yeah, back here. And uh, we were gonna take a look at now the main program. We just checked out the Axidraw class. Mm -hmm. um, so this is it's not such a long program. I can show here it's medium. <laughs> um, let me see. So I created this class, which maybe I show another time. Mm -hmm. But basically, this is to make create standard for the page document mm -hmm. sizes. So this is an A5. Mm -hmm. Um, because yeah, we're often working with A4, A5. So essentially, this just sets the width and the height according to the parameter you pass. Yeah. It. Okay. It says the width and height, and mm -hmm. yeah, and then I'm using this PPI. You can, mm -hmm. s I think, I rem I think this was then changing how large. Yeah. The it will actually be. Mm -hmm. uh, but this I thought it was a good s size for the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, set it to portrait. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so here we have, oops, I hit this thing. We have a new feature which you can find, I think, if you use the next ver version branch mm -hmm. of the template, which is the windowed GUI. Mm -hmm. It's a detachable GUI, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. It's basically, you could type GUI and it would work, mm -hmm. and then the GUI would be inside of your program. Mm -hmm. This way it's a separate window. And yeah, uh, I think it's good to yeah to have the full space mm -hmm. because here I'm working with A5 so yeah, I, I want to yeah, have yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to have the whole canvas there um, the next line is interesting then I mm -hmm. create an, a MIDI device which I have another class here mm -hmm. and, and I was qu quite happy with this and the thing is that it's you can use it uh, with a GUI mm -hmm. so my GUI uh, we will post a video in a moment, has 16 knobs. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you can use the knobs or you can use them here. Mm -hmm. So if if for some reason my MIDI controller breaks, mm -hmm. I continue to use the program just by modifying these mm -hmm. things. And, and you can see the design changes when you move the, the those sliders. Um, the MIDI device class is not very complex is rather mm -hmm. short mm -hmm. um basically and, and it's i mean it's in general like standard midi device classes the first yeah. thing you do you get uh, a list of the midi devices mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you check if the one that you want is there yeah with the name yeah. you check if it's null or activated and then you go on right yeah yeah okay. um mm -hmm. how can i show ah not these i wanted to show you when i run the program uh, it we should show the list of the device. Let me stop it and start it again. Mm -hmm. uh, right yep. there, so it's printing down there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you know why this? Who named this? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> the default MIDI device is called Gerville, Gerville or something. Know. I never the I JDK. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know where it came from. But anyway, mm -hmm. this is there. It's like a virtual device, I think. Mm -hmm. This is the only actual MIDI device I have is this, mm -hmm. and it's shown twice for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that's useful for debugging to print those names so you mm -hmm. can see yeah which one. And let me see then device name. What do I have? Ah, I'm mm -hmm. passing that yeah, from you're outside. Yeah, passing it from outside. Yeah. Um, Twister. Mm -hmm. So this is some change we did, I think, la I don't know if it was this year or last year, that you don't have to specify the full exact name, mm -hmm. which is maybe Twister, square brackets, and mm -hmm. all those mm -hmm. things, but it will just search for, for one. And in this case, which one would it select? Do Good you know? point. I don't know. Maybe yeah. I think they refer probably to the same device. I okay. don't know why. I think it maybe this is the default. Mm -hmm. So m uh, I assume now when I look at it that uh, if you if you would type here default, mm -hmm. then it's gonna choose this twister. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because I don't know. I had it plugged when I. Okay. Some some device must be the default one. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing you have to be more precise than this is if you have several of the same hardware, mm. then maybe one is I don't know zero 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 and the other is one zero zero or something mm -hmm. like that. So then you then have, you have to, to, to specify. Yeah, okay. yeah. But yeah. So that's mm -hmm. how you open a MIDI device mm -hmm. in this controller. And then these, okay, these are other form of parameters, these, uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. here you can see it's the same syntax like before. Mm -hmm. uh, we use annotations mm -hmm. and that is used to to show them in this GUI here. Mm -hmm. uh, 
otherwise you wouldn't need the notations but mm -hmm. I wanted that is both a hardware thing and a and the vector for parameter comes with this visualization or yep. yeah okay. yeah this yeah 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 mm -hmm. so it's like this thing with four mm -hmm. little mm -hmm. s sliders or something yeah mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I call them ABCD mm -hmm. um, I, I'm also sometimes like torn like should you give them very specific names to every yeah. knob because then it's more clear but then mm -hmm. if you we go to another program, then you have to change everything. <laughs> yeah, it's ma it's less reusable. The more specific it is, less yeah, reusable yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, then what are these on create? These are, these are event. We oh? haven't looked at this yet. Mm -hmm. This is how you can create events mm -hmm. in OpenR and the R. Okay. Uh, so here, basically, I'm creating an on create event, which I can later uh, dis call co dispatch, uh, dispatch or something like yeah. mm -hmm. so I trigger here passing an argument mm -hmm. um, I pass an argument because here I said this one contains an, yeah. an integer and then probably somewhere someone is subscribing yeah. to this event right? and outside yeah. I guess let me see uh, where I use MIDI Ooh, somewhere I must be listening to to those mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. Yeah. so this is then I can mm -hmm. hear I will execute this function whenever this event is transmitted. Yeah, this is similar. I mean, it's of the same family of the key down event exactly. for the keyboard. It's the same yeah. idea. It's the right? same. There is an event created, yeah. and that class listens yeah. to that, and things happen. Yeah, this is yeah. just it's nice to know that you can create your own. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Um, then this I had the other day. Mm -hmm. uh, after the event yeah. it was super uh, like could do this in like two minutes and it was super nice mm -hmm. because you can randomize the parameters yeah. and you know yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I for example i create this function that completely randomizes the values mm -hmm. or another one that uh, randomizes them by a certain amount mm -hmm. so they go slightly up or down yeah. 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 yeah and then let me see ah so i must have that somewhere here in the main yeah for example randomize Mm -hmm. And you can see the design. Yeah, this is more randomized. It's more of a random walk on the space of parameters yeah. because you go a bit before, a bit after. Yeah. yeah. Or if I click random here, yeah. then I'm creating mm -hmm. completely different. Mm -hmm. And you can see also the sliders change. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing, let's make a tiny video of the hardware. Uh, maybe if you r make sure that from the top, that and I'm going to record. And now I'm going to click here, random. And you can see that the same values are visualized on the hardware itself. Mm -hmm. And then maybe you can also move one of the knobs yeah. and see that the visualized ah, true, changes true. on the... So if I go move this down, mm -hmm. you can then see it changing both on the GUI and on the design. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cool. Yeah. So essentially, essentially the device... But this is a feature of the device, though, right? You yeah. have to have the device that... Mm -hmm. uh, not uh, every yes. The, there's certain devices that have like this some kind of visual f yes. output, like yes. LED strips yeah. or something like that. These are, these are also continuous rotary, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Or yeah. there's expensive ones which are motorized. Mm -hmm. uh, those mm -hmm. also can ad up the update. Mm -hmm. This is very useful uh, to have s this kind of device because when I start the program, ah, that's also this is automatic. You see, this is part of the GUI. If mm -hmm. I close the program and I start it again, it uh, from everything is as it should be, as it was, I hope. And it's because the the settings are saved to a JSON file, mm -hmm. which is the so latest. So there is persistence, yes. And yes. I believe yeah. that then the, the knobs or the lights <laughs> on the MIDI controller will update when you yep. start the program. Yeah. And so I was saying this is important because like if you have a live performance or something, you want to start from a known state. Yeah, I have uh, I have um, something that happened to me with this. Uh -huh. Is um, I was working with uh, with some stuff and I had the GUI, and uh, some of the parameters uh, in particular were uh, related to having bigger or smaller shapes. Okay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so uh, with bigger shape, of course, you have more complexity and mm -hmm. the problems. Uh, the, the 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 performance becomes worse, right? Mm -hmm. So at certain point, I set it so high <laughs> that the that the um, program would crash, oh, no. and I could not reopen uh. because reopen it, <laughs> uh, it would load the same parameters. Yeah. Do you know any way to clean this JSON file? Because you you see, I, I mean, 
Yeah. I, you can say start from, uh, I think the 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 GUI yeah. API exposes start. You know. Yeah. Uh, but is there a way to clean this JSON file? Um, I'm thinking. I was thinking what I would do. It maybe detect on the when you start a program on the init or something if you have the shift key pressed down or something like that mm -hmm. and if you have a certain key then uh, assign all the values to a, a different preset ah yeah okay so you could save a good preset yeah yeah and, okay and that's a good point and load that one yeah that's a good point and th that what you're describing it happened with open rnd yeah. Oh. Ah. yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> funny yeah. situation yeah yeah yeah. And then I went with, you know, I think you can say GUI dot, if uh -huh. you look at inside the class, yeah. there is a, a, a method that say don't start, you know, uh -huh, uh -huh. don't start from from the previous one. Okay, okay. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, but it, no, it's very, it's very useful. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Yeah. And maybe we can, uh, because I, th I think that's almost everything that there is in this Yeah, there's some class. more details. I will post a link to the mm -hmm. code. Oh, well, this was interesting. This is the binding. Mm -hmm. So this is how you connect the GUI to the hardware. Mm -hmm. and, and then you can change either the GUI or the hardware and the other updates accordingly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, yeah, maybe we can say a few words about then the piece itself. Yeah. So where are these parameters being used and uh, mapped to right yeah so then there is a big class here with a sort of big method mm -hmm. which is the one that creates everything mm -hmm. and this is a function extension i suppose right because you're extending the composition drawer no? yeah i don't know where do yeah. i call that uh an interest why is that ah draw design draw margin yeah mm -hmm. yeah 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 so um what am i doing here yeah so i'm it's because it's a composition mm -hmm. drawer, then we are not drawing directly on the screen, but mm -hmm. we are producing vector mm -hmm. data, which we save on an SVG file. Mm -hmm. And I did something kind of weird. I wanted to uh, experiment with in this program, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, it's probably let me reset to a kind of an simple state. Uh, where would be that be? Uh, like mm -hmm. here. No, these are kind of short. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then you have an idea of what the program mm -hmm. does. Uh, what the program is doing is moving four shapes. Mm -hmm. So the the four knobs on the left. These are shape contours, no? Yeah. Yeah. I kind of lost one. I don't know where. Ah, there's. Oh, no, no, it's inside. Yeah. One, two, three. Okay. Four, yeah, yeah, yeah. So the four knobs on the left slide a shape on top of the previous mm -hmm. shape. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think you can uh, make them be outside or inside. Mm -hmm. It's kind of it's kind of hard to control. Mm -hmm. The the thing that I did, which was weird, was that if you bring the knob to zero, the shape disappears, mm -hmm. and it d appears on top of the whatever is the last shape. Ah. So the order is not fixed. Okay. Okay. And yeah. I thought I just wanted to play with this idea. Uh -huh. um, p if you think about it, it's probably it's rather wrong that a knob can do different things like mm -hmm. like yeah yeah <laughs> but it's i i like it's not mapped one on one yeah with it's not one to map yeah, one yeah. to one so um but i still thought this would give more possibilities to create things mm -hmm. because you could i don't know have the court be a triangle and then put other things on top or you could start with a hexagon and stuff mm -hmm. yeah and mm -hmm. um, yeah then what i did the four following knobs uh, are adding like the number of little lines on each of these shapes. So essentially one controls the number of simple points and the other one controls the length uh, of these lines that go towards the direction, no? Yeah, okay. they go towards the follow in like in a loop mm -hmm. uh, one goes to two two to three three to mm -hmm. four four to one mm -hmm. so you can connect them like if they're short then you don't notice this but um, then there's other knobs like to kind of break mm -hmm. the contour so it's not full. Mm -hmm. Then you can make uh, some of them disappear randomly. And the breaking happens with the sub probably contour. Yeah. yeah. But I think there is also some smoothing that you are doing, no? Because this is a polygonal curve, but you are uh, rounding the corners, no? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's okay. rounded, regular ah, there shapes. Is. So okay, you can I see this here. This your uh, algorithm to. This is part of our X shape. Ah, same shape, so there's okay. regular 
around okay, the polygon. Okay, so instead of starting from a shape contour, you can... I, I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. This, this produces a shape contour. Yeah. Rather, yeah. It has like yeah. face and radius and yeah, but it does a little bit more because yeah. it rounds. Okay, yeah. good, you can good. choose yeah. how much rounding, yeah. rounding okay. there is. Um, and yeah, what else is there? Then one kind of bends the shape so they don't go in a straight line, mm -hmm. but uh, one knob rotates the whole design. Mm -hmm. Notice that the, the whole design kind of is scaled to fit the always the screen because mm -hmm. I didn't want it to be out of the paper. Mm -hmm. But uh, another thing that uh, now it comes to my mind is it seems that the the, some of these shapes will take more time than others. Do you put any control on the lines so to make sure that the plotter would not take a no. really <laughs> long time? Ah, okay, no. so <laughs> I thought I thought this would be interesting because you could measure the length yeah, of every yeah, single yeah, line. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, and at, le at least tell the person like, yeah. this is going to take. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I, I think that the, 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 I'll say the, um, the time is kind of proportional to yeah. the length. Yeah. Maybe even linearly, but I don't know. I'm not uh, sure. Well, the, what's missing is the, the travel. Movement. Yeah, the travel from a point yeah. to, from a part to another. Yeah. But there are some, or this is already optimized, no? Probably. It's optimized, so but it still adds. Uh, who knows? Maybe yeah, 10%, ten percent or something, or, or something yeah. like this. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And so the idea is that people would play with this, yeah. and then when they're happy, they play the plot, yeah. and they would see the yeah. the, the thing appear. Yeah. Okay. I had this on the table, and then uh -huh. basically just click here, plot. And okay. Well, I have to yeah. before that set the paper and the pen. Okay. But but that's it. So this is more. This is similar to like make your own sandwich, but with <laughs> plotters. You, know, so you have a certain amount of ingredients. Yes. But uh, maybe maybe it would be nice to for next time mm -hmm. to map it. You know, like the para uh, sort of. Uh, how do you say to? Because at, in this moment, of course, you you didn't expose what the parameters were. I mm -hmm. mean, these are just stop. You can move. Okay? Yeah, yeah. It would be nice to come up with uh, meaningful parameter that are then mapped visually mm -hmm. like chao chaos yeah. or you know density yeah. or so that you know mm -hmm. a user can use yeah. this intuition yeah. to go there and say like ah maybe I want something a bit more jiggly yeah, or yeah, yeah. You know, whatever I, but, uh, I should have done something to make it a bit well some people someone said maybe put labels <laughs> ah no <laughs> uh, yeah and but the other thing uh, which would have helped is if I did set up initial simple state mm -hmm. because yeah. if you star start already with a very complex thing like mm -hmm. when you click here random what do you want to move then like, you start yeah. moving things and you don't see the connection yeah but if you start with a simple shape where mm -hmm. you only see the regular polygons then mm -hmm. you're more likely to understand yeah and another thing well, one last thing yeah. uh that's a question this is more about the device can you make the device blink yeah because that's also another way to attract. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, this device is pretty m flexible. Okay. You can you can make things blink at many different speeds. Yeah. You slow, fast. You can make them fade in and out. Mm -hmm. You can change the colors of the little pills there on the bottom. Yeah, because uh, it, it would be it would be fun to have something like you know uh, that blinking means what what the algorithm suggests as the <laughs> best parameter to manipulate yeah. as a choice mm -hmm. among many yeah, yeah. and. But but th this becomes interesting because the user can use something else. Mm. So the yeah. blinking will change, uh, you know, according to some criteria, like for instance, area span yeah. or length span. Yeah. Yeah. So you know, and uh, it would be one could make totally like I would love to make a game for this thing. Yeah, it's, because yeah. because imagine they they are all off and you turn one and then suddenly another thing turns red. Mm -hmm. And then you don't know, uh, should I turn this or not? So and a game only for the device yeah. instead of with oh, no oh, visual. Oh, and it can be both. It, can it could be, both. be only purely, I thought like making the Simon Says game yeah. with the device. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. also it could be with graphics on the screen yeah. and with sound. Yeah. Uh, and then it's like uh, you're trying to understand what this thing does. Yeah. As a interaction design <laughs> to its to its max. Okay, good. But yeah, yeah. so we have seen how yeah. well, well, essentially how easy it's to interact with the MIDI devices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, and yeah, we have seen also a nice application of uh, the GUI. Mm -hmm. So to make something that allows, because to me this happens also 
it happens a lot that I create a GUI at the end because I want to explore parameter. At a certain point, I understand that, mm -hmm. you know, I don't need code anymore, but I need to explore yeah. the space of parameter. And for this, the GUI is very easy. It's yeah. very useful. Yeah. And in particular, I think I want to play now with this load image because this is one of the things I still now stop and play, you know, stop and start the program mm -hmm. to change the path of the right. image. Yeah. But if I could load... Mm -hmm. One, yeah. that would be awesome because I don't need, you know, it's yeah. more fluid. That's yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So uh, I just saw one thing that might be useful for mm -hmm. anyone, which is this fitting of yeah. the design. Yeah, yeah. Um, you can see here that th this is a list of shape contour. Yeah. And that has a bounce property. This mm -hmm. is done by OpenRNDR. Mm -hmm. So then I can do this fit and mm -hmm. specify where it should fit. Mm hmm and what method so it should contain. Method, yeah. So this will make sure that this I'm leaving a 50 pixels margin around. Mm -hmm. And then th this produces a transformation matrix. Mm -hmm. and then and then uh, you apply the transformation yeah. to the to the shape. Then you, you have get, to yeah? map. So mm -hmm. you have to apply this to every single yeah. shape. And mm -hmm. that's it. Yeah. And nice. That's yep. a good uh, last tip, tip to close the episode. Yes. <laughs> okay. So hopefully this has been interesting and I'll see you in the next episode. <laughs> see you. Bye bye. Bye bye.